Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello and welcome to Harvest on this Tuesday, April 25th. Can you imagine being wrongfully charged and spending years in prison? Well, that's what happened to Gene McGuire. The author shares with us how forgiveness led to his release. And Brian is in the holy city of Jerusalem today with today's prayer request. So if you need prayer, give us a call during the show, 1-800-365-3732. You can also email your prayer request into prayer at lacy.com. Good to see you today, Val. Good to see you too. Yeah, uh, listen, found a story about uh, the Bible Bee Game Show, which has been going on for a number of years now, I think since like 1999 or something mm -hmm. like that, but Kirk Cameron hosts the show now. Uh, they just uh, had their season premiere for this season and a tremendous audience response, about a million television viewers and about 30 million people watching the premiere uh, online at Facebook Live. That's where I watched it and it is exciting and it is exciting to see people get to you know get back into the Bible especially mm -hmm. these young people to memorize scripture right you know I I've been doing that lately myself not I mean I'm doing You're be good. A contestant <laughs> no 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 but I'm doing good if I feel like I memorize a chapter. Some right. of these people have memorized an entire book of the Bible. So yeah, it is yeah. exciting. And, and the contestants are aged 7 to 18, mm -hmm. and they're tasked with uh, memorizing up to 850 Bible verses in 90 days. And then the competition begins, and there's a, um, uh, basically a prize purse of $270,000. I know, right? It's just amazing. And I think what's also interesting is, um, you know, the number of people watching on Facebook live mm -hmm. and how that's kind of you know how social media is evolving into this place where you actually get your content right um you know live on facebook live and you <laughs> can watch it and of course we know that facebook live uh has had its own uh troubles in recent sure. weeks yeah. Yeah. but it's good to see that it's for the good in this situation in this situation yes and uh the show is sponsored by the museum of the bible which is opening up national museum of the bible in washington dc uh, this coming November. And uh, Hannah Leary, who's the, the, the former winner of uh, last season's National Bible Bee Game Show, uh, said that it's not just about memorizing Bible scriptures or passages, it's about studying the scripture, mm -hmm. diving into the Word of God, and understanding what God is communicating to us and to the world through His Word. And uh, Cameron said that his hope is that the, uh, the game show, the National Bible Bee Game Show, uh, inspires people, and young people especially, all around the world to read and memorize God's Word. And so it's good to see this kind of content being put out there. That's right. And Stefan, we know that the Word will become alive to people as they read it and memorize it. You know, that was one of my concerns when I first became a Christian. You know, these are just words on a page. But God, if you breathe on these words, they will become life to me and I'll learn how to live according to um, God's standard. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me. And so I'm studying now the book of John. I'm on John 14. Ooh, good Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. That's what I have Very so good. far. <laughs> I, that will well not done. land me a spot on the well National done. Bible B. <laughs> but it will change your life. Yes, it and will. And it will comfort you in time of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's better than any game show. <laughs> Listen, if you want to help spread the word, it's one of the core missions here at LaCie Broadcasting is to send the Bible out around the world. And uh, people have asked for Bibles from over 190 different nations. Uh, they found out about the Spread the Word outreach and said, hey, can I have my own copy mm -hmm. of the Word of God? Uh, and now today through Feed the Hungry, we're sending out Bibles uh, to our different program sites all around the world as well, uh, touching and changing people's lives. But you can be a part of it for just $5. $5 will send one Bible to someone in need. And today, maybe you can sponsor a whole case of Bibles. I believe there's 24 Bibles uh, in a case, so it's mm -hmm. a gift of $120 to really change the life of man, just hundreds and hundreds of people. Because that one Bible you send, or that case of 24 Bibles that you send, doesn't just change a life. It's spread 
the word. So that Bible goes from person to person. The scripture goes from person to person. Change a, a person, a family, a church, a congregation, a community, a whole village. You know, we, speaking of a village, we've shared this story a couple of times here on the show where a pastor in a village had one Bible. Yeah. That one Bible he used and the villagers, all the entire village came to faith in Christ just on that one Bible. So when we ask you to give to the ministry of Lissy Broadcasting to help us change lives and uh, around the world, that's what we're doing. We're sending out the word of God. So join us if you'd like to be a part of that Spread the Word campaign. Easy to do. Give us a call, 1-800-365-3732. You can also go to lacy.com. And be sure to connect with us on social media as well, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, live at lacy.com is the email address for us here on the set. Up next, former prison inmate Gene McGuire shares a powerful story of forgiveness. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples. He was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the C Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the C Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. The C Broadcasting partners in faith make it possible for millions to hear the word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help the C Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. In 1977, Gene McGuire's life as a free man ended. He was one of three persons involved in the late night robbery of a bar. One of the men stabbed and killed the bar owner and Gene was sentenced to life in prison without parole. But something happened that transformed Gene's life forever. And that's where the story picks up today. Hello, Gene, welcome to The Harvest Show. Well, thank you, Valerie. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Okay, the fact that you're here with me and not in prison means something happened. You had an encounter with Jesus Christ and that got the ball to rolling and uh, now you are out. Tell us about it. Well, I was uh, sentenced as a juvenile in 1977 to life without parole for a homicide that my cousin uh, committed during a out shooting some pool and uh, drinking. Uh, there was another st older stepbrother and uh, Again, uh, against permission of my parents, who said not to go out, I went out. And, and uh, during that time, my cousin decided he wanted to rob the place. And, and I knew I wasn't going to rob the place, but I was. It was my cousin, it was my big cousin, and, and I went along with it. And he, uh, in the in the process, murdered the owner. And, and which I followed him and went to New York City, turned myself in a day and a half later, and I was arrested and charged in Pennsylvania for homicide and conspiracy. I was placed at a juvenile center pending uh, hearing. My cousin, he turned himself in approximately uh, 10 days later and uh, was arrested and basically he, he said he was the one who did it and that uh, he led me along. Um, I had an attorney within the first nine days of my arrest, the public defender, who uh, basically counseled me into pleading guilty to a homicide charge, which landed me a life sentence without parole. Okay, so you, you did that. How much time did you actually serve? I spent 34 years, nine months, 15 days on a sentence that I thought would have been 10 years. I would have been out in 10 years by his counsel. And thus I pled guilty to that charge, hoping that I would 10 years. And uh, of course that didn't happen. But 10 years into my sentence, I. Uh, I attended a weekend revival that was going on at the prison called Prison Invasion Six. It was a national uh, prison invasion and uh, throughout the United States. And I was uh, invited to go to this 
chapel program that it was a three-day program and it was at that uh, third day at the program that I um, heard the message Jesus Christ died and he rose again and in him there's eternal life and I heard the pastor say real men make commitments and when I heard that I, I just knew I needed to I was 26 and a half years old and I had nine and a half years served in a life sentence and and when I heard that message it stirred me that uh, if Jesus did that for me that I could live for him and you say in your new project, Unshackled from Ruin to Redemption, that God can do the same thing for other people. Now, for those who may not have a dramatic life story like yours, what's the takeaway? What are you saying to readers? Well, I know that there's freedom in the person of Jesus Christ because God is about relationships and uh, over uh -huh. projects. And I, something I learned while I was incarcerated that uh, my relationship with God and my relationship with other people are more important than projects. And, and in that relationship with Christ, there's a freedom to make good, healthy decisions, holy decisions, uh, based upon the Word, based upon the Bible, uh, which I, you know, I, I hold to very uh, uh, with a lot of conviction. It is a, is it a path, so a light and a path unto my way. And, and so I, uh, I just encourage people to. Um, it, develop a relationship with Jesus, which literally frees you from uh, sin, addictions, attitudes that are bad, and any other um, behavior that is destructive to yourself and to others. And by that, um, there's the freedom no matter where you're at. That's not a matter of demographics. It's a matter about a relationship with Christ. Well, I'm sure our viewers and listeners want to know what led to your release. What led to my release was in May of 2010, there was a new Supreme Court ruling, uh, Graham versus Florida, and it based, uh, it's, it was the new law based on um, um, ca brain capacity for juveniles, saying that juveniles do not have the capacity and do not have the ability to think consequently, and so their decisions, um, when we, we, we say, what were you thinking, juveniles, basically, say, I don't know. Well, that's, that's basically an MRI and medical science now that brains uh, don't develop until like into 25. Uh, so that was an issue for the, the courts to decide and it allowed those who were sentenced to life without parole, who did not kill, who did not know that uh, a murder was gonna happen and did not believe that, um, were allowed to go back in court and have their sentence adjusted to, to receive a parolable sentence in which I was one of 479 juvenile sentence lifers in Pennsylvania. What do you say to people who feel that they're trapped in unbelievable circumstances in life in general and they just feel like they, there's no way out? Yeah, I think I can relate a little bit to that. And what helped me was I, I really did. I just I looked uh, and I just said, Lord, help me. And it was basically those words, Lord, help me um, through this situation. And uh, because I had a relationship, because I had... Uh, been reading the Bible, I had some uh, some evidence and I had some direction to go to. But there's been times where, um, you know, I, I had some long dark nights and some hard mornings, and I would I would literally look up look up and say, Lord, help me, and uh, I need grace for the situation. And I encourage even the young people that I'm around today and I speak to is that uh, there's no situation too hard for the Lord that if you would just call upon him and ask him, he'll lead you and guide you and supply for you. You just mentioned speaking to young people. What's going on with your life today? Do you have a ministry? I do. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time mentoring uh, young men and older men too, uh, just sharing my personal experiences that I've gone through. I also work as a corporate pastor for a uh, large family-owned Christian business with about 1,400 employees and we have 900 youth working for us, and I spend my day around them and just speaking into their life, trying to be an example and being a, a, a resource for them. You know, I always tell them, you know, you can you can ask me questions, but to point the hard ones to the Lord. And uh, but it's been really receptive. The reception has been really well. And uh, here in Dallas, Texas, uh, I love it, and and I just get to invest in people throughout the week. Jane, when a person reads Unshackled, From Ruin to Redemption, what do you want them to walk away with? Well, I want them to know, uh, first and foremost, you can have a relationship with the Lord. Absolutely. It's, it's as simple as saying, Jesus, 
I want to know you and I want I want to I want to have a relationship with you. The other thing is I, I've noticed um, and, I, and I probably didn't expect it uh, at, in my writing of this book. I was very vulnerable with my life and I thought being vulnerable is the most effective uh, means of, of, of touching people. When you're most vulnerable, you're most effective. And so one of the things I've really heard a lot about is people that are trapped in bitterness and anger, whether it's a failed marriage or a failedness or somebody hurt them. And the book is um, giving them tools to know that they can forgive those uh, that hurt them and can walk in freedom. Amen to that. Thank you so much, Gene, for joining us and sharing your story with us. Well, thank you, Valerie. It's been a real pleasure to be with you. To connect with Gene, go to GeneMcGuire.org or go to Harvest-TV.com for a link to his new project. It's called Unshackled, From Ruin to Redemption. Harvest continues in just a moment. We know you're working daily to make healthy choices for your life and the life of your loved ones. MHC Life is here to help you with those choices by offering supplements and materials that maximize your personal health and total well-being. Restore and reset your digestive system with the MHC Restoration Pack, full of prebiotics, probiotics, and vitamins. Order today and get 35% off plus free shipping. Visit MHCLife.com or call 1-800-965-2345. Enhance your total health today, mind, body, and spirit with MHC Life. Hi, this is Stefan Radulich with Feed the Hungry, and I want to encourage you to become a Full Life Monthly Partner today. Why is that so important? Well, because children like these children at the Kiriandongo Refugee Camp come to school every day for a hot meal. For all of these kids, this is the best meal they're going to have. For many of them, it might be the only meal that they have on a given day of any month. Because of your monthly support, we can make a monthly commitment to schools like this. It takes $6 a month to take care of one child, so maybe today, you can make that $6 a month commitment, or 12 or 18. Or maybe you can make a commitment of $30 or $60. And for doing that, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 or visit feedthehungry.org to help a child know how good a full life feels. I want to take a moment today to talk to you on this thought, bitter or better, the only difference is I. Look in the Bible, Luke chapter 22, these are the words of Jesus. He said, Simon, Satan hath asked for you, he's desired you, that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. Jesus was letting Peter know that he was getting ready to go through a time of spiritual sifting. Now, in the natural, there was an ancient practice of sifting wheat where the grain was agitated or shaken in a kind of fan or a sieve. The grain remained in the fan, and the chaff and the dust, they were thrown off and they were blown away. But after the sifting, all the chaff, all the dust would be gone, and only the grain, which was pure and legitimate, would remain. So when Jesus tells Peter that Satan desired to sift him, he was letting him know, Simon, you are getting ready to have some trials, some temptations that are going to agitate you. But after the sifting is done, the spiritual chaff, the dust of your life, it's going to be gone. And only the faith that is authentic and genuine is going to be left. Listen, my friend, all of us must go through a sifting process. Because if we don't, then our faith will not be legitimate. You see, tried faith is true faith. But faith that is never put to the test will never stand the storms of life. And I know there's some of you watching right now. You are going through the sifting process. Maybe it's in your home. Maybe it's on your job. Somewhere in your life, there's an agitation that is taking place. And I want you to be encouraged today because God knows exactly what he's doing. I want you to know the enemy. He must ask permission before he can try you in any way. And that's why Jesus told Peter, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, because there's nothing he can bring into your life without first the approval of God. Look what the word of God says in 1 Corinthians 10. There hath no temptation taken you, 
but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. You see, even when God does approve for you to go through the sifting process, he's right there to intercede for you to make it through. He may at times allow us to go through that sifting so that we can become better. But if we don't walk through it right, instead of becoming better, we become bitter. Think about those two words, the difference between better and bitter. One letter, the letter I. I make the difference between whether the siftings of life make me better or bitter. It's a choice that I have to make. I encourage you today, don't allow the trials to make you bitter. Allow them to make you better because I believe the best days of your life are yet ahead. Friends, it's Tuesday, and I really look forward to being with you during this time of prayer together. These are real concerns, and we're looking for real answers as we pray to our real God. He loves us, and He cares for us, and we thank you for sharing your concerns and your praises with us. Let's go over some of the prayers that have come in today. Hannah in Wisconsin, I knew it was coming and I know that it has, and I need prayer for strength. It's been a while coming, but here it is, and it hurts. My friend Maggie has passed on. And then another request coming in for comfort over the death of a loved one from Diane. She says, my husband Don passed away, and I need prayer and the comfort of God in my life. Friends, Let's go to God right now for these two lovely individuals who are hurting. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for Hannah and for Diana and for the lives of their loved ones. We ask for your spirit to comfort them and that new friend and family relationships may come into their lives. Next up, we have a partner in faith, it's actually two, Shirley and Fred, a couple. We need a miracle, they write. Our son is dealing with a broken marriage, upset children, and now he's suicidal. Well, we're certainly going to pray for you, Shirley and Fred. Dear God, we pray for the son of Shirley and Fred, asking for your protection over their son, his life, your protection over their grandchildren, and the restoration of this man's marriage. Father, we pray this in all of our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, feel free to contact Prayer Line at any time. Here's a reminder that the International Prayer Line is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can start by giving us a call at 1-800-365-3732. Send in your prayer request via email at prayer at lacy.com, worldharvest.com, or in 61300 Ironwood Road, uh, South Bend, Indiana, 46614. And Pastor Charles is the director of the International Prayer Line, and he loves it when he can bring us praise reports. <laughs> People call in with those prayer requests often, 10 to 12,000 callers a month. month right? That's right. And yet we, you know, like the leper, the one leper came back <laughs> to share the praise report. Yeah. What do you have for us yeah. today? Yeah, you know, we can just about get praise reports every day. We mm -hmm. get them okay. just every day. The only thing is, is there's far more prayer requests. Yes. And so we just want to make sure that everybody understands that there's no prayer requests too small or too large to call us and have us pray with them about. And we're doing praise reports today. And then here's Laura from Florida, your neck of the woods now. Mm -hmm. She says, uh, you all at Prayer Line prayed for me to get a job, and I got it. She says, my son asked if I would call you again <laughs> with him and 
he got the same results. Wow. She says he starts his new job Monday. Awesome. Praise yeah. God. And then we got Sadie in Florida. Sadie says, thanks for praying uh, my friend through. Her liver surgery was a success. Mm. Thanks to you guys at Prayer Life. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we got Jay in Louisiana. Jay says... Thanks for not giving up on me and my wife. He says, I called you guys at prayer line to pray with us, and you prayed us through. Mm -hmm. After two years of separations, we are back together again. Wonderful. We Man. are not at all surprised, Stefan, that God is responding to prayer. We know that if we, you know, if we seek his face and we ask him, he will respond. That's why we're asking people to send in those photos yes, yeah. for the prayer chapel Absolutely. upstairs. Tell us about that. Absolutely. We're getting in pictures. We're getting them in, Val, but, but we're getting them in slowly. We'd like to get pictures each and every day mm -hmm. to make sure that we get that wall filled up. You know, previously we had pictures up there on the wall from the beginning of the time when Dr. Summerall was alive. So many pictures that we had kids that was on that wall, Stefan, that now has grandkids. And their own kids. <laughs> and their own grandkids. Keep yeah. praying for them. Keep praying for them. Uh, that last praise report you shared there, Pastor Charles, two-year process. Two years. They've, 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 the thing is, both of them, the husband and the wife, was called Going a prayer, prayer line, line. Mm -hmm. over two years. That's some, some good persistence there yes, uh, to see the Lord w have time to work things out. Yeah, and we continue to pray with them. That's Amen. right. That's why we want you to give us a call. You know, the number is 1-800-365-3732. Send in those pictures so that we can put your picture on the wall of love. That's what we call it up in the Let's See Broadcasting Chapel so that we can love on you and pray for you. Thank you so much for watching us. We'll see you tomorrow <laughs> on Harvest. <laughs>long to visit the Holy Land, but don't want to travel alone? On a Lassie tour to Israel, you're not alone. Our team of professionals has more than 50 years experience bringing Christians together in the fascinating land of the Bible. You and your new friends will worship together as you sail the Sea of Galilee, break bread in the Garden Tomb, and get baptized in the Jordan River, just like Jesus and the disciples did more than 2,000 years ago. What better way to experience the sights and sounds of ancient Jerusalem than with other believers from around the world? To join us for a life-changing trip to Israel, November 8th through 17th, 2017, go online to lasseetours.com or call 1-800-685-3732. Tell the operator to send you a free information packet today. But seats are limited, so don't wait. Call now. Just one visit to the Holy Land and your faith will never be the same. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible. $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.